Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. So I decided to make another video because you guys liked my series so far. So I just want to continue with that basically. Um, so I'm got this is a new video for the multiplayer tutorial series. And in this video, I basically want to continue on where Hello we guys. were uh, and explain you guys some handy tips. So there's going to be a lot of information covered in this video that I think is useful. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in it. So basically what we did in the last video is that uh, we set up a function here inside of the game mode that will find us a random player spawn and then it will spawn our player there. And then as soon as our player controller starts here, then from the local player version of that player controller, we call that spawn uh, on the server here. And then the server would basically spawn our character with ourself as the reference of that player controller who wants to possess that character. So that's a very nice basic to understand, of course. Um, and then in a previous video before that, I, I, I explained to you guys some basics of uh, the multiplayer framework where more so the basics of the Unreal Engine framework uh, and the core classes that are required to build your games, basically. So what did we talk about here? About managing connected players, uh, things like on-post login, on-swap player controllers. Uh, and basically we talked about the whole stuff that explains what the relationship between all of these core classes are. So somewhere in this video here, I explained that to you. Yeah, so I see that it's here in the beginning of the video actually, but I did not explain this in this video apparently. I explained this in a video before this one. Uh, but yeah, here I basically explained like what is a, a game state, what's a, a game mode, where does the game state exist on the server and the client, what is a player controller, for example, and then what are widgets in relationship to that. So where I want to continue today is to basically talk about now that we know the relationship between these and how to spawn a character, the next thing in your game might be to add some UI. Um, and for for adding UI, I want to use some very interesting basics that you should know when you're using Unreal Engine. And some of those things are called a function uh, library. So if you right click in the content browser and go to blueprint, you'll see a blueprint function library. Um, and what that does, it's, it's a library of functions that you can use throughout your entire project. So whether you are inside of the player controller class, inside the game mode, or inside some widgets, for example, you can always call those functions wherever you are throughout your project. Um, so they're very nice when you're making functions that have reusability, or if you're using uh, utility type functions. So I get into that a little bit later in this video. I also make a little separate video about that. Um, yeah, and then basically also here under blueprints, we have something called a blueprint macro library, and that's also very interesting. So uh, what I'm going to cover in this longer video is how to use these to your uh, advantage, basically, when spawning things such as UI and sharing data across your UI in a replicated manner. Uh, and then I'll also make some separate videos just for people that are just looking to see how these classes work. And overall, I will make more tutorials like that. So let's get right into it before I do too much talking. So um, the first thing right now is if we click play, we will spawn the player. So let's click play and tada, we spawn the player. And typically what you see is that you go here to your world settings and then inside of your game mode, you have a player defined to spawn. But that's what we skipped here basically, because in multiplayer, obviously you can die with your character or something like that. So you just want to uh, spawn the player with code. Now let's go on to the next thing, and that is how to get your base user interface up. So uh, as many of you know, you can right click and go to user interface and then go to widget blueprints. Uh, and I always like doing that in a separate folder. So when you look at typical projects of mine, this project contains many tutorials, you will see a blueprint folder, a map folder and a widgets folder. So in here, we're going to go right click and click on widgets, and then we're going to click on user widgets. You can also select it over here. Um, and then we're going to type the, the shortcut for it. So that's double WB, which stands for widget blueprint. And then let's type in um, uh, core HUD. So I want to have some core HUD basically. And HUD stands for heads up display. And inside of this widget, we are simply going to put a little crosshair right now. So uh, let's make this core HUD a canvas panel. That way it covers the whole screen. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we are going to add a simple little crosshair. So for me, an image will suffice. And I will call this one over here, uh, crosshair image. 
Um, I'm going to anchor it. So hold control and shift to the middle. And then we're going to make it a size of five by five. So that's five pixels by five pixels. So it's just a little dot like this and it's a square little dot. Um, this does not have to be a variable. So let's uh, click that out because we do not want to have a huge list of variables over here that are not necessary. Um, so yeah, we got that over there. And now let's do something else. Let's make sure that we add a player name. So we want to see the name of us as the player. Um, so let's put that here in the top left corner. Let's make the font a tiny bit smaller, like uh, 15. And let's give it some offset. Uh, let's do 50 and 50 down like this. And let's size it to the content. And then we're going to call this the username and uh, we're going to make it a variable. So we call it username underscore text and make this a variable so that we get it here in the list. And what we can then do with it is that we can pull it and type off of it set text. And then the bottom one is the one you need. So this way we can now with code control the content uh, of this text here, basically this one. So uh, that's ready for us. Let's go ahead and spawn this UI into our game. So uh, what most of you that are, are kind of starting out with our engine will probably do is that you would, um, in this case, uh, just spawn your widget here. So typically what you guys would do is create a widget. Uh, and then what you would type in here is, uh, or the one that you would select is the one that we just made. So it's the core widget. Um, and then basically the owning player, you would typically type, uh, or typically this is what you would actually do. You would do get player controller, and then compile, save, and then you create a widget, but then you want it to be viewed in the screen, of course. So this just makes it into existence in the level. But then what you want to do is that you want to type add to viewport uh, to basically be able to see it. And then what you guys would typically do is that uh, you would just run this right off of a begin play. And right now, if we test this in a new editor pie window, you can also play selected viewport if that's what you prefer. Then you can basically set it to one player with net mode standalone. And then if we hit play, then we see over here that we now have a username in the top left and a dot in the middle. The reason I'm in the, in the ground right now is because I'm not spawning the character. So um, let's make it a little sequence. So I hold S and click a sequence. So I want to spawn my character and add my UI. So let's hit play and there we go. So now we see a crosshair and we see a username. So actually, now that I think of it, we're in a third person project here. So I'm going to quickly delete that crosshair. We don't need it. So let's just get rid of it. But uh, at least we see the username in the top left right now. So we added some UI and now we want to have data in there. But before we do that, I want to basically do the correct setup of this. So this is what you would probably typically do. But what I recommend that you do is that you make a separate class instead of having all of your user interface here inside of your player controller, promoting these widgets to variables and controlling them from here. I recommend that what you do is that you put that widget stuff inside of what is called the HUD class, because that's there for a reason and it's easy to manage it from there. So if you look at your play, uh, at your game mode here, uh, you can do that by going to the world settings. You would typically, or you would, you always see here the HUD class and it's set to HUD, which is the default HUD class that a game mode comes with. So what I recommend is instead of managing your UI here inside of the player controller, which is fine by the way, I recommend just doing it in the class that it's supposed to be in. So if you right click here, then you can go to blueprints and then you can type in HUD. Uh, and then you will see this HUD class over here. So if you select that, then you can give it a name. So I'm going to call mine BP HUD. And then let's just call it a uh, base setup because that's what I call all of these classes. These are my base setup classes. If you want to be, if you want to do it the same way that I actually do it in our own project. So we we're making a game right now. Then what I call these types of classes is core. So I always call it BP core game mode, core game state, core HUD. So, um, so what are we going to do inside of that HUD class? Well, we're going to open it up. Uh, and then first of all, we're going to assign it to the game mode. So over here, we're going to assign it now. So all of these are my base classes. I'm going to hit save. And then inside of here in the viewport, you can set up all your UI here. 
Um, so let's do that first. Let's move the code from this player controller inside of here. So we're gonna basically copy this two of these and delete it over here, delete this sequence, and just make sure that the player controller only spawns our character. Then inside of the HUD, we're gonna make our first uh, heads up display here. So our first UI part. Um, so right now, this, because this is assigned, this will basically spawn my UI. So if I click play, we still see in the top left our username. And this works in multiplayer as well. Uh, important thing to know about the HUD class, just like any UI, it only exists on the owning client. So th there's no replication going on in here. It's just for you and for your offline computer to handle this class. So um, how do you want to go about handling this stuff? Well, I can show you guys how I do it in my game here. So this is our game. I can click on, uh, on play. I'm in first person. I can walk around with my character just like this. And as you see, I got some UI because when I press I, I got a little like inventory here to select clothing. And when I press M, I can do some hosting of games, for example. So how do I manage something like that? Well, let's take a look actually. So inside of the HUD class here, we can go to the event graph. Uh, and the first thing that you see me doing is calling to focus my input on the game. I always like doing that because in our game, we want to just focus the input on the game actually. Um, and what is that handy for? Well, as soon as you start inside of your level, uh, if you do that, you can then have direct focus on the game without having to click the game first. So what you sometimes see is if you click play here, I have still my mouse here and then I need to click for the game to consume. Well, if you install that part that you can have direct focus on the game, then that's what you will have. So let's go ahead and do that. So in here, we're gonna type set input mode game only with the owning player controller. So in here, um, in the player controller here, you would typically type get player controller. And then this is the player controller for you. Um, but inside of the HUD class, the way that you do it here inside of the HUD class is that you basically uh, have to type get owning player controller. So if you type in get player controller, you, uh, this is the one that I recommend using here in the HUD because this is the, the local, the owning player controller of this HUD class. So this one is the one that we want to have it own this uh this widget that we create as initial widget. And then what I also recommend doing is storing a variable to it because we might want to change stuff inside of this widget. So always call your variable name, just whatever your actual widget is so that you know uh, what you are using basically. So this one, we want to add it to the viewport. So let's do it like this. So here we create it and here we add it. Um, and that's essentially it. So this way we can now click on play and as you see, I don't have a mouse because it immediately focuses my game and I have my HUD. And that's the way that I want my game to work. Um, now, how do we communicate uh, from our player controller to that HUD class? So let's say that we have a widget that we want to toggle. Then how can we do that? Well, let me explain that. So first of all, let's make a little widget. And this would be uh, your typical panel. It might be your inventory panel or, uh, or pause menu, for example. So what you would do is that you make another widget and let's call it uh, inventory, just as an example. Um, and then inside of here, we are going to have ourselves a canvas panel and inside of the canvas panel, a little vertical box that I'm gonna wrap with a border. So here's that little box of ours. And then we're gonna make it a different color. So let's make it something like this. And we're gonna size it a little bit. Let's do like this. Uh, and let's anchor it to the middle of our screen and then a bit to the right here. So this is our fake inventory panel. Inside of the vertical box, let's put some text. Doesn't look the prettiest. Let's just call it inventory. All right. So um, how can we basically toggle this panel? Well, what you can do and what a lot of people do is that they would basically just call create widget again. Um, so how do they remove it? So they would typically get a reference to the widget that's currently on the screen. And then to remove it, they would type remove from parent. 
Um, but this way you basically create widgets all the time inside of Unreal and then you each time you have to actually clear them. That's not the most performant way of doing things. So what I recommend doing is basically creating a widget that is standard set to collapsed and then making it visible as soon as you need it. So let me show you how that's done. So um, basically what we're going to do off of here is that we're going to type create widget. Um, and the widget that we want to create is our inventory widget. And we want the owning player controller to be the owner of it. Um, and then we're going to add a variable here again. So we're going to promote it to widget blueprint inventory. Um, and then we're also directly going to add it to the viewport. But now I want to talk about some separation here. So um, inside of a game, you typically have widgets that are game widgets. And then you also have widgets that are game menu widgets. And then you might have some actual widgets that are uh, menus. And in your typical game, you would see widgets that are modals. Modals. So let me explain what each of these is. This is going to be quite a long video, but there's interesting stuff in here. So um, basically, game widget that would specify something like your HUD. That's a widget that's inside of your game. In that, you would see in your HUD, you would see how much health you have. You would typically see things such as um, your uh, your ammo count and if you're reloading, things like that. Then game menu widgets, I categorize those as things like an inventory menu, uh, a panel in which you can see your achievements, for example, a character panel, um, things like that, that you that are menus inside of the game. So actively used in gameplay. Then we have menu widgets. Those are typically widgets that would be a main menu um, or some kind of a settings menu inside of the main menu. Maybe inside of your main menu, you have like server browser. Those types of things are menus. So you're not inside of a gameplay level. You're in the main menu level and you have different types of menus there and then we also have modals and modals are basically pop-ups and notifications so we have all these different types of widgets so i would specify your hut over here as a, a game a widget basically so let's call this game and then over here we're gonna make things that are game menus so inventory we specify it as a game menu well you might have multiple game menus so as an example in our game here um what is hut well hut is this crosshair right now and the chat that you see on the bottom left i have that as my hut basically uh, where we will also have some health in the in the near future but then what are game menus well this panel over here is a game menu because with this i can make my inventory this panel over here is a game menu because with this i can basically host games here that's how we implemented it and i can press escape and then have my pause menu for the game so i have settings i have uh, yeah things like that basic stuff and then i have some modal so if i click here on exit game we have a pop-up that says are you sure you want to quit or not with which we then quit the game um so yeah, so so basically, um, let's say that we have another game menu. So let's create that real quick. Um, which should blueprint and then call this one, uh, not inventory, but call it mounts. This is our mounts menu. So uh, actually, I'm gonna duplicate this one because I wanna use the same type of logic. So we're gonna do which should blueprint mounts. Okay, and then inside of here, we're gonna put this border. Let's put let's put our mounts panel. It would spawn over here, and then this is uh, called mounts. Boom, mounts panel. Okay, um, so uh, the first thing, so what you do with this is that you see that we add the game menu as the first. So on begin play, game menu is first. Now what this does is that game menu is all the way in the background. It's in the in the first layer when you talk about something like a set index. And then uh, the additional widget, if I would add this one to the viewport, this second one, it would be basically laid on top of this game menu, on top of this game hood uh, uh, layer, basically. So what I want to do is that I want to create these widgets and then add them to the viewport here um, after I add my hood. So there is actually like a, an order to it like this, a chronological order. So right now we're also going to pop up this one, create another widget basically. And this widget is going to be our, where is it? Our mounts widget. And we're going to promote this to a variable and call it widget blueprint mounts. 
Okay, let's go. And then what we can do is that we can add these widgets to what we can call an active widget list. And then if we pop up the inventory panel, panel we want that one to show. But then if we want to click an, a button like M and then display mounts panel, we might want that inventory panel to remove and only that mouse uh, mounts panel to show. So how would we go about something like that? Well, we would make a little widget here called uh, uh, widget list and then we can promote this to a variable and call it user widgets or, or sorry we promote it to a variable called widget list and this is of the type widgets um sorry of the type widget and then it is of the type user widget object reference and then we want to have this be an array so this array here will contain all of our um, game menus. So I'm calling it widget list, but you can also call it maybe a better name, game menu widget list. So as you see, if I compile this, this one is empty, but now we're gonna add these guys to this list. So the way that we do that is as soon as we create our inventory panel, we're gonna get this array here and we're gonna say uh, add and the one that we want to add to this array of game menus is our inventory. Boom. So let's do it like this. And then the second one that we want to add to this array is going to be uh, our mounts panel. So that's also a widget that we want to use in our game. So here we go, mounts. Okay, so after creating the inventory and the mounts, we now have them both inside of this array of our widget list. So at the end, when we're done actually creating them, we haven't added them to the viewport yet, then we can go ahead and add them to the viewport. Um, so the way that we can do that is that we can say hold F for, for each loop. You can also type in, you can right click anywhere, right click and type in for each loop. There you go. And then we're gonna hook up this array of ours that contains those game menu widgets. And each of them, we wanna simply add them to the viewport. So of course, as you can understand, what's going to happen right now is we get HUD. On top of that, we will have then our inventory. And on top of that, we will have the mounts uh, and they will get added in that order as well because we create them in that order. So in the first index here is inventory, second one is mounts. So those two are of course in different positions because that's what you saw when I made them. So if we hit play right now, you see on the left mounts panel and on the right an inventory panel. Um, so why do I do it this way? Well, we only want to toggle them because that's more performant than creating them and removing them from the parent. So that's what I recommend doing. That's what I actually do in our actual game title for Steam. So, um, yeah, but now you can see them, obviously, if you hit play. So we need to fix that. So the way to fix that is that you go into these classes. So first you go into your inventory. Um, so how do you fix that? How do you make sure that this one is not visible by default? Well, you go into your graph here and then you go into class defaults and you scroll down a little bit and then you see the default visibility. So that's the visibility for the whole widget. Currently it's set to not hit testable. So that means it's uh, it's visible, but you can't click it, but we want it by default to be collapsed. And we're going to do the same for our mounts panel. So we're going to go to graph class defaults. And by default, we want this panel to be collapsed. There we go. And then we hit play and then currently you don't see them. But performance wise, they are already on the screen. So they don't have to be created and removed all the time. That saves a lot of performance. All you have to do right now is collapse or make them visible. And my, some of you might have the question, well, if it is collapsed, does it run in the background? Does it still cost me um, performance? Well, the answer is no. When widgets are collapsed, it's essentially the same as that they are not in existence. So if you have things that are ticking inside of a widget like that, for example, um, you can test that that way. If you if you collapse them, you will see that your tick doesn't run. Um, and I have that here in our game as well. So if I click on M, you see that this uh, is a slider and it, 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 it goes like this. So it has progress. If I click this away, that tick on that slider is basically this Disabled. And then if I click M again, it continues where it was because it basically it gets paused and it gets back again. So um, it is very performant this way. <laughs> okay. Um, 
so how do we now get them to be visible or or not um, how do we go about that well basically we can now click these uh, widgets away here because we don't need them at the moment we can all handle that in one simple manner here inside of this hood class and then we want our player controller class to handle the input and we want the hood class to handle uh, toggling them to visible or invisible so first of all, let's make some inputs here inside of the player controller. So we're going to do keyboard and let's do uh, I. So when I press I, let's find it. Where the heck is it here? <laughs> so the I, we want it to pop up our inf story. And then we want to do keyboard M. And we want that to pop up our uh, mount panel to toggle it essentially. So um, how do we go about this? Well, I'll show you an example of how I did it in my own project. Um, basically, as you see here, I create game widgets, so I add them to the viewport. And then what I do is over here, I create the menus here. I use a sequence to create the menus instead of popping them all next to each other, because uh, the order of these doesn't matter, because when I toggle the one, it switches out the other. So when I press I, it pops up this, and M toggles that one away and pops up this. As you see, I also immediately get a mouse that is instantly focused on it. And if I click away, that mouse is gone again. So... Um, how do I do that? Well, basically I made a function and I called it toggle widget. So if we go here to toggling, we see toggle widget as a function. And what does that function do? Well, it asks for a widget to focus on. Um, and then we validate that we actually input a valid widget. And then we set that to be the current widget in focus. So if we look here at runtime category, I have my widget list and I have my widget to focus. So that's the first thing that we're going to set up here in this project as well. So we're going to have here um, uh, an active widget. And it's still of the user widget type, but it's not going to be an array. So it's just going to be like this. Boom. Um, and then we're going to make that function. So let's call it toggle widget. We're going to compile and save that. Now over here, we want to pre-make an event that uh, will, will do this for us. So we want to have a custom event that will toggle our inventory. So let's just call it toggle inventory. And we want a custom event that will toggle our mount panel. So let's call it toggle mounts. Like this. Um, and then these events can basically be called from this player controller when we press this. So how do we do that? Well, we want to have a reference to our HUD class. Um, so how do you get a reference to your HUD class? Inside of your player controller, you type in get HUD. And here you go. And then you can simply cast it to your BP HUD base setup. So this is my HUD class. And then inside here, we can then obviously call those events. So we can call toggle inventory right now. And this you could then basically attach here and have it run that. But what you want to do is that you don't want to do too, much, too many casts. That's not performant. Um, so you want to promote this to a variable and have this be your cast basically. Now, uh, uh, as some of you might know, casts can fail because when you click play, uh, the whole game needs to initialize. And that works from uh, in, in hierarchy order. So first the level initializes, well, first your game instance initializes, then your level, then inside your level, things like a game mode go first, then a game state, player state, player controller, and kind of in that order. So it might be the case that your player controller is initialized, but your HUD class is not. So then there's a couple things that you can do. You could run a, a, a nice and sketchy delay node here and plug it in here. And every time it fills, you just delay and you go into it again. And I'm gonna make a separate video on this little topic here as well. But what I recommend doing is that you make something which is called um, a macro and that that macro does something uh, until a specific timeout is hit. So uh, the way that we can do that is that we go here to blueprints and we go to macro library and uh, then you can make a library for each specific class that exists inside of the engine and you have to make them for all these specific class classes. So unlike a function library, this one that you can use throughout any class inside of your whole project, a macro library is class specific and you have to set one up for each class, but it's still a lot easier easier than having to write this type of code inside of every individual class because what if you get parent classes and or child classes and stuff then you need to do that stuff all over again so um 
or not not in child classes necessarily because then you can use the parent class function of course but if you get other types of classes that are also of the player controller type that are not child classes you have to do it all again so for that purpose I recommend using macro libraries. So over here, we click on macro library and we're going to make one right now for the type uh, player controller. So we're gonna click on it and then we're gonna call it BML player controller. Uh, so that's basically called blue, uh, blueprint macro library player controller. And if we open this up, we see that this looks like your typical macro. Just like how in the player controller, you can make functions and make a macro and then it looks like this. So I'm going to delete this again. It looks exactly the same here inside of the Blueprint macro library. So uh, the macro that we're going to make um, is going to check uh, basically if, if something is valid or not. So I use this in our actual project here as well. Um, and you can see them over here. So if I go here to my macro libraries, you see I got a quite a bunch. Uh, and this is a, a, the typical function that I'm going to teach you right now to make uh, that will verify if you have a valid cast to something or not with a timeout installed. So let's click this away. Or actually, I'm going to put this on my second screen. So what do we need here? First of all, we need an execution pin. And this function is going to check whether or not, because we're going to use it here, whether or not our HUD class is valid, but we're going to use these types of functions for other classes soon too. So I'm just going to make the first one now. So um, this wall one, we're just going to call it in, because this is where we go inside of the macro. And then here we're going to install a float that will specify our timeout period. And we're going to set it, if you click on here, to a default timeout period of 10 seconds. Uh, then what we're going to do is pop up a sequence. So hold S and left click, and we're going to get that first class. So we're going to do get hood, and then we're going to do that cast to our BP hood base class. This cast is going to go in here. Uh, and then uh, two things can happen. So first of all, it can be a direct success. In that case, we want to return it, and then we gonna want to call it success. Uh, and in case it's a success, we also want to give the reference, but I'll do that in a little bit. We also can have another outcome, and that is that we fail. That's the second outcome that we can have. So let's add another pin of the execution type and call this failure, or actually failed. Um, so it can fail or it can have a success. And if it has a success, we also want to give it the reference of the class that we're trying to cast to. Um, so if it is a fill, what do we do? Well, we basically delay for not 0.2 seconds, but for a whole second. And we're going to do that a couple of times until we hit that timeout period. And why do we want to do this a couple of times? Well, it's a bit sketchy to do it like this and to have this delay note here. Because let's say that your game runs this in a scenario and that it will always keep failing to cast to that specific cast uh, or that specific class that you expect it to cast to. Well, let's say it will always keep failing. You will have this uh, leaking inside of your project. Basically, you will have this running inside of your project all the time without you understanding that that happens. So this is dangerous. That's why you want to use uh, this technique here that I uh, came up with myself actually as a very nice tactic to, to solve these types of uh, challenges. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically uh, set the amount of times that we want to try this before we say, never mind, um, to the amount, to the timeout time here. So we're going to do this n times. And then when the counter is equal to the amount of times that we want to try it. So let's make uh, this like this, and then we're going to plug it in here. And then we're going to do it like this. Let's add another point here to the line. Plug this one in here, looks a bit better. So basically we fill, we wait a second. Um, we do it an n amount of times at max, and that's standard set to 10. And then we're going to check if, uh, if we basically hit 10 or not. So if um, the amount of times that we did it is already equal to 10, in that case, we're gonna say, then we failed. Because then we basically hit the timeout period. So then we're not gonna try anymore. We're not gonna go risk that we keep looping it like this. Um, but if it didn't hit the 10 yet, then let's try it again. So then basically you can plug this straight back into here. Um, let's do it like this. And then, oh, we're going to get this line like this. 
Boom. So if we didn't hit 10, we're going to try to cast again. And we're going to try it for 10 seconds. Uh, and then, yeah, if you want to call the macro library again, you can do that and then you can reset it like this. So the reset will go into here. So basically, once you call this macro once, it goes into the loop, boom, boom, boom. It either successes or fails. Uh, and if you call the macro from anywhere else in the blueprint, uh, then that is a separate macro of its own. And that will reset this and, and we'll try it again, essentially. So this new macro here, let's call it get um and then the name of what our hut class is so in this case bp hut oh hut uh, base setup is what it is so now we got one global macro and we can call this in any player controller class inside of the blueprint net so now we can replace this what i call trash with uh this new get uh bp hut base setup class and look how beautiful this looks so when the player controller starts we basically get the beautiful function. And if it successes, we're gonna store that reference of the hood class. Um, now that we have that reference of the hood class, we can simple, simply draw it out here. And then we can call those events on it. And we know that this is already a valid variable. So we do not have to convert it to a validated, for example. We also do not have to type is valid like this no we already did that with our beautiful macro over here so now you can call here toggle <laughs> inventory just like this and that's all the code you will see inside of your nice uh, player controller class and then over here we can oh shit over here we can then call toggle mounts plug this in line it up just like that so that's what this will do. And then here we can print. So we can say toggle inventory. And here we can say uh, toggle mounts, right? So now if we hit play, I hit I, we see it prints toggle inf, we hit M toggle mount. Very nice logic. Now let's actually make it so that it toggles the actual widgets. So for that, we have a, a, a widget here to toggle. Uh, and then we're gonna put a reference inside of here. So here we're gonna make it of the widget type again, the user widget type. So type in widget, go down to user widget, boom. And then this is our, our target uh, widget. So that's the widget that we wanna toggle. So essentially we're gonna call this when we wanna do the inventory one. And then the widget that we wanna toggle is this one. And then we're gonna do the same when we wanna do the mount one. And then the widget that we wanna target is that mount widget, this one. Uh, and then inside of here, we're gonna write some logic. So first of all, we're gonna see if we actually properly hooked up a widget to this. Let's say we accidentally call this somewhere without a target, then it's gonna be invalid. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is valid, um, just to make sure. And once we call that, we're gonna set that active widget that we made. So it's just a, a, a reference here, a variable that contains the target widget to be the active widget. So this is the one we want to show basically. Um, and then the, then what we're going to do is that we want the one panel to remove the other panel in this uh, example that I'm showing you. So we're going to get our game menus, hit F left click to get it for each loop. And we're going to loop through all of these. So first of all, we're going to check if every widget in here is valid. So for the first one, because that's the one that comes out now, it's just how I explain my examples. We're going to check if this one, let's reroute it, if it is equal to the one that is already in focus, basically. So this is the active widget. Let's rename this actually to uh, widget to focus, widget to focus. So let's see if the toggle is equal to the widget that uh, is currently in focus. Just like this. And then we're going to say, well, if it is active to the one that we are going to focus, uh, that, that, that is in the focus right now, then we can basically conclude that it is um, already in the screen and that we want to remove it. If it is not already in the screen, then we can uh, make it be in the screen. So there's a couple of different logic things that we're going to do right now. First thing we're going to check is, is the widget that we find, is it visible? So is visible, just like this. And then we're gonna say off of the false here. So if this is a, a, a widget that is not currently in focus, but it is visible, uh, 
That means it's, uh, let's say that the mount panel is currently active. So that's the one that's in my screen. Uh, that's not the one that I want to focus because I clicked on inventory. Then the first thing that we can conclude is that we want to basically collapse that. Uh, we want to make that current mount panel invisible. So that's what this little logic here is going to do. So um, that mount panel that comes through here as an example, we're going to set the visibility on it. And we're going to make it be uh, collapsed in the scenario that it is visible. So if it is visible, we want to collapse it just like this. And in the scenario that it is uh, equal to the current widget. So if, if my inventory is already in the screen and I click the inventory button again, that means that the which th th that means that I did this event again while this widget was already visible, then we're going to toggle that widget. So basically, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll show you that right now. So we're going to get that widget that is currently in our focus. We're going to see if it is visible because it can also be not visible. Um, and then we're going to do two things. Let's do it like this. So if it is visible, we want to collapse it because then we pressed I again and we're already seeing the inventory and then we want to collapse the inventory. So basically what that means is that we then want to focus back on our game. So we have a function called focus game that we do here. Um, or and otherwise we want to basically focus that widget. Because then we're trying, because if, wait, I hope I explained this right to you guys. So uh, that you understand what I mean. So if that widget that we want to focus is not in focus yet. So let's say I have zero widgets in my viewport and I want, I click this for the first time. It means that the widget to focus is currently uh, not visible, then we want to focus that widget. So let's make a little function called focus widget. And we do that in this scenario. So now we have three, uh, even, uh, three functions here, toggle widget, focus game, focus widget. Um, the focus the widget, let's do that one first. So basically um, the way that we do that is that we get the widget that we aim to focus, for example, my inventory. And first of all, we want to toggle that visibility because remember by default, we set these guys to be collapsed and now we want them to be visible. Well, to set one to visible, you don't click on visible because then you can actually click it and you don't want to click all the parts of the widget. So the standard visible method is not hit testable self only. That one makes it visible. Uh, and then the next thing that we're going to do is that we want to instantly have our UI focus that widget. So the way that we do that is that we get our owning player controller of this HUD class. And now we're going to type in set input mode. And we want our input mode to be on the game and on the UI. Um, and the player controller that we want to do this with is the owning player controller of this HUD. And then the widget that we want to focus, you guessed it, is this widget then we do not want to lock the mouse and we do want a high tech mouse during capture. That looks nicer. And then what we also want is once we pop up an inventory panel, we obviously want to see our mouse. So out of here, we're going to type set show mouse cursor and we're going to set this to be true. Well, uh, let me check the recording time. It's already 45 minutes, but it's a, it's a nice tutorial. So I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> so this is what we want to do when we focus the widget. Then let's say that that widget's already visible and we want to focus the game again. Then we're going to go into that scenario. So how does that look uh, like basically? What does the, how does that work? Well, then we're going to get that widget to focus and we're going to say, then reset its visibility essentially. So set visibility to collapsed. So we want to have this one gone again. Um, and then what we do once we set it to collapsed is that we uh, get our owning player controller again. And in this case, we want to set the input mode to game only. We want to focus back on our game once that inventory panel is out of the screen. And then we also want to hide that mouse cursor again. So what do we do right now? Let's uh, do a quick little recap. We uh, created these widgets, we added them to the viewport, all of them, just like this, boom. Um, and then we have these events installed inside of this HUD class. We got one little function here, toggle widget. Uh, it asks for a target widget that we want to show, so inventory or uh, mounts. Uh, and then basically we loop through it. If the widget, if the first widget that gets found inside of the list is valid, uh, so that means that we, we actually uh, created it here. 
then what we're going to do is that uh, we basically say, is it equal to the widget that we want to focus? If that's not true, then we're going to check if the widget that we found is, uh, is visible. If it is visible, then it means there's just a visible widget in our screen that we want to get rid of, basically, because the only one we want visible is the widget to focus. So all other widgets found will be set to invisible if they are visible. Um, and then the widget to focus, um, if, if the widget that we're trying to toggle is the widget that we are trying to focus, then we're going to see if that one is already visible. If it is, we're going to focus back on our game. So we're going to set that one to be collapsed, focus back on our game. Uh, and if it is uh, not visible yet, that widget that we're trying to focus, then we're going to make that widget visible and set our focus and our mouse to it. So let's go ahead and test this nice system. So we can walk around. I can press I, I get my mouse, and we get the inventory panel here. I can then press I again to get it away, get my focus directly back on the game, remove that mouse. I can also press M to get my mount panel. I can directly click it and get it away. And I can click I to have an inventory panel. And then if I click M, it replaces the inventory panel with the mounts panel. And that's a beautiful setup. Now, of course, you can use this for something like a, a pause menu and stuff like that, right? So that's how I do it in my game. And this is a beautiful example for you guys to understand how to handle this type of stuff. I think this is actually becoming a, a rather large video. So I'm going to quit it here and call this video something like uh, how to create uh, widgets in an efficient way in our engine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the next video, I'm going to explain to you guys how you can actually set data in these widgets. So we're going to extend this uh, stuff like uh, the, the Blueprint macro library to also verify our player state. And then once the player state is verified, we can then basically have the widgets safely set inform information on themselves. So if we have something like this core widget with a username, we want it to set that username to the player name. Um, and we're not just going to cast here on the construct to that player state and have to cast fill. No, we're going to make a beautiful widget blueprint macro library. Um, and once it's verified that a, that a uh, a class exists such as for example the player state class at that point we're gonna then initialize this widget to set its username so let's talk about that in the next video i hope you guys like this give it a like and subscribe also check out our patreon and our marketplace products we make great products if you guys are new to our engine or are trying to learn our engine you can check it out here link in the description all these games are top tier. They're all made with the with the best blueprint practices and stuff. All multiplayer ready as well. So uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, bye guys. See you in the next video.